Although Robert Bob Olinger wore the badge of a lawman, his infamy lay in being a cold-blooded killer, drawn to the violence of range wars like a moth to a flame. Born Robert Amrith Olinger around 1841, his family left Ohio for the wilds of Oklahoma when he was but a lad. As a grown man, he drifted westward, eventually finding himself in the rugged terrain of New Mexico. In 1876, the mantle of Marshall was bestowed upon him in Seven Rivers, Lincoln County, New Mexico. But his tenure was as short-lived as a tumbleweed in a desert wind, for suspicions of affiliations with outlaw bands led to his swift dismissal. Such misfortunes would come to define Olinger's path, as his penchant for gambling and revelry often led him astray. Olinger's trail of death began with Juan Chavez, a Mexican compadre with no history of violence between them. They shared friendship and poker at the Royal Saloon in Seven Rivers, until accusations of cheating set off a lethal chain of events. Bob, unholstering his six-shooter, confronted Chavez, and when another player tossed a firearm into the mix, the two exchanged deadly shots. As the gun smoke cleared, Chavez lay lifeless, a bullet in his throat, while Olinger callously remarked, All's well that ends well, before striding out into the night. The shadow of death followed Olinger to Diamond Lil's casino and dance hall, where a fateful poker game unfolded with a man named John Hill. Lady Luck favored Olinger, and he swiftly emptied Hill's pockets. In a fit of frustration, Hill proclaimed himself hornswoggled, suggesting foul play on Olinger's part. Initially, Olinger took no action, but when night fell, he gunned down Hill in cold blood. Come February 1878, the Lincoln County War raged, and Olinger found himself in the thick of it, allied with the Seven Rivers Warriors. The conflict escalated when the Dolan Murphy faction sought to seize John Tunstall's horses as collateral for an unpaid debt. Sheriff William Brady led a posse, Olinger among them, but instead of making an arrest, they left Tunstall lifeless on February 18, 1878. While many took part in the murder, only James Dolan and Jacob Billy Matthews faced charges as accessories to the crime. Olinger's involvement in the Lincoln County War proved a fatal blunder, as Tunstall's ally, Billy the Kid, swore, I'll track down every one of those who had a hand in killing John, even if it's the last thing I do. With time, Olinger's killings grew ever darker. The following year, while engaged in a poker game with a man named Bob Jones, another gambling dispute ignited. Aware of Olinger's grim reputation, Jones wisely steered clear of confrontation. Yet Olinger seized an opportunity for vengeance when he learned that Deputy Pierce Jones held a minor warrant for Bob Jones. Olinger tagged along, and when they arrived at Bob Jones's homestead, the scene was one of unsuspecting domesticity. Jones toiling in the yard, his children at play, and his wife attending to the kitchen. Offering no protest, Bob humbly asked the deputy if he could step inside and have a word with his wife, assuring her he'd return once his fine was settled. The deputy nodded in agreement, and Bob entered the house, passing by his hunting rifle resting on the porch. Although Bob Jones showed no inclination to reach for the weapon, Olinger drew his pistol and discharged three rounds into Bob's back. As Jones's wife and children looked on, screaming in horror, and Deputy Pierce Jones stood in stunned disbelief, Olinger held fast to his belief that he could claim self-defense for this blatant murder. Deputy Jones promptly leveled murder charges against Olinger, leading Lincoln County authorities to issue a warrant for his apprehension. Sheriff George Kimball took Olinger into custody and brought him to Lincoln for a trial set for October 1879. Remarkably, the case never saw the inside of a courtroom and was dismissed under mysterious circumstances. In that very same month, Pat Garrett ascended to the position of Sheriff of Lincoln County. Astonishingly, Olinger found himself appointed as Garrett's deputy, much to Garrett's dismay. Knowing full well Olinger's propensity for violence, Garrett would soon bear witness to it firsthand. On one occasion, during an attempt to arrest an armed Mexican fugitive who had sought refuge in a ditch, Garrett assured the fugitive he'd be unharmed if he surrendered. However, as the man emerged with hands raised in surrender, Olinger drew his weapon as if to shoot. The man's life was spared by Garrett, who positioned himself between the fugitive and Olinger, admonishing his deputy with, Holster that piece, Bob, unless you're itching for a showdown. When a bounty was placed on the head of the notorious Billy the Kid, and Pat Garrett resolved to hunt him down, 
The brash Olinger harbored hopes of being the one to dispatch the infamous outlaw. In December 1880, Pat Garrett tracked down Billy the Kid, along with Dave Rudabaugh, Tom Pickett, and Bill Wilson, capturing them and transporting them to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Following Billy's conviction, he was relocated to Lincoln to await his scheduled execution on May 13, 1881. Olinger, among other men, was tasked with escorting the kid back to Lincoln. Along the way, Olinger incessantly tormented Billy, to the point where even his fellow guards sympathized with the outlaw. In response, Billy cautioned the deputy, saying, Watch your step, Bob. I ain't danced my last jig yet. While Olinger undoubtedly searched for opportunities to eliminate the kid during the journey, they arrived without incident. Locked in the county jail, Olinger persisted in taunting Billy, to the extent that Garrett ordered him to lay off the kid. On one occasion, the crafty lawman even went so far as to place a pistol within Billy's reach, but the kid proved too shrewd to take the bait. On April 28th, Garrett was absent on business, leaving Billy the Kid in the custody of deputies James Bell and Olinger. While Olinger escorted several other inmates to the Worthy Hotel, a block away for their daily meal, Bell remained with Billy. Somehow, Billy acquired a pistol and shot Bell, then commandeered Olinger's 10-gauge double-barrel shotgun, positioning himself by the window in his holding room. When Olinger returned to the hotel and heard the shots, he fled immediately. Positioned directly beneath the courthouse window, Olinger heard his captive say, Hello, Bob. He looked up to see Billy, shotgun in hand. It was the last sight Olinger ever beheld as Billy fired his own shotgun, ending Olinger's life instantly. The lifeless bodies of deputies Olinger and Bell were placed in a chamber in the corral behind the courthouse, remaining there until Garrett's return. Garrett vowed to exact revenge on Billy and fulfilled that promise by killing the infamous outlaw on July 14, 1881. Having hidden behind a badge for much of his existence, Olinger's deeds branded him as a killer more nefarious than the majority of outlaws. Even his own mother would remember him with these chilling words. Bob was a murderer from the cradle, and if there's a hell beyond, then that's where he belongs.